Hello, welcome to the North Star Controller NetConf Provisioned LSPs Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After completing this learning byte, you will be able to use the North Star Controller to deploy a NetConf Provisioned Label Switch Path. The North Star Controller can use two protocols between the controller and an MPLS ingress router to provision a label switch path. It traditionally uses a protocol called PSEP, the Path Computation Element Protocol. The North Star Controller is also capable of using the NetConf protocol. So if you have an edged router that does not support PSEP, if it supports NetConf, which is another standard, um, I, I can use the North Star Controller to dynamically deploy label switch path configuration to an MPLS ingress node. The difference between a PSEP signaled and a NetConf you know, provision label switch path is that using when you use the NetConf method, the label switch path, the properties of it are actually stored in ingresses and nodes configuration files. So it's different because the PSEP ones aren't, right? They're kind of ephemeral label switch paths. When they're provisioned with PSEP, they're provisioned on the ingress node, but they don't appear in the local device's configuration file. So if the device loses contact with the North Star controller for a long period of time, the PSEP signal label switch paths will eventually time out. Whereas the NetConf provisioned ones, you know, stay on the device. They're in the device's local configuration file. Now, if you complete, you can provision label switch paths and completely remove PSEP from the equation if that's what you'd like to do in, in your environment. The only drawback to that is if you remove PSEP from the equation, you lose the real-time status information about label switch paths that PSEP provides, right? PSEP is an active state stateful protocol that is feeding information back constantly to the North Star controller about the status of your label switch paths. NetComp does not provide that functionality, right? So I just don't have as up-to-date as real-time picture of how the LSPs are performing on my network as I do with, with PSEP. Now, some requirements that are a little bit different. If you are going to provision NetConf LSPs, you, you have they require a device profile entry. I don't need this with PSEP signal label switch paths, but in the, in the North Star Controller, and I'll show you this when I, when I get to the demo, you have to create a device profile entry where you specify things like a device management IP address, you know, connection credentials, management protocols. And in this example, we're enabling the NetConf protocol. It's in the access tab of your device profile entries. This is a requirement. Now, I only have to do this on the nodes that I actually plan to provision you know, NetConf LSPs on, right? So I don't have to do it on all the nodes, but just the nodes I plan to provision NetConf label switch paths, right? So, so, so you check those boxes and you also in the, in the, in the same, on the local device, you also has to ha have to have NetConf enabled as well. So this is an example of, you know, in configuration mode, enabling the NetConf protocol over secure shell on a, an MPLS ingress router, you know, VMX1 in this example. So those are the, the two things that are, that are a little bit different that you have to do. So if you would like to provision label switch paths using the NetConf protocol. I'm going to demonstrate the process for you. The, this is the example network that you'll see once we get into inside of the North Star controller interface. Here's the, on the left-hand side of the diagram, you'll see the VMX1 node. This is the, this, I'm going to establish a label switch path. I'm going to provision a, using NetConf, a label switch path on the VMX1 node. And it's going to traverse the WAN, and we're going to terminate it on the right-hand side on the VMX2 node, right? Um, and I can provision from VMX2 to VMX1 as long as VMX2 has a device profile entry with NetConf enabled, and it has NetConf enabled in its local configuration file, right? So this will be our example network from VMX1 to VMX2. Let's use NetConf to provision a label switch path. I'm going to connect to the North Star controller interface now. Right, this is the North Star Controller Administrative Interface. In, in the Topology Map Panel, this is the, the lab diagram I was mentioning previously. Right Here's VMX1 on the left-hand side and VMX2. In the Network Info pane uh, on the Tunnel tab, I, I don't have any label switch paths currently at this moment. Now remember, one of the requirements to do NetConf provision label switch path is, is that you need a device profile entry. In the North Star Controller Interface, in the More Options menu, there's an administration option. And when you select that, there is a device profile option in the menu that appears on the left-hand side. And I'm really interested in the VMX1 node, right? This is a, an example of a device profile entry. You can make them manually, you know, add them in. You can sync with the network. It can discover them. 
by analyzing the traffic engineering database for your WAN. I've already created a device profile entry, so I'm going to click the modify button here just to just to show you kind of what makes these up. It's BMX1, but, but the big thing is here's the management IP address that the North Star controller can use to connect to the platform. Here are some login credentials of a super user account that has you know rights to actually execute CLI commands on that on, on the VMX1 node. And then here on the access tab is where you need to make sure you have NetConf enabled. So the North Star controller knows that this device is capable of receiving NetConf provision label switch paths. So that's a little bit of the dirt work there just to get the device profile entry created. I already have NetConf enabled in VMX1's local configuration file. So since I opened it up, it, it, it thinks I made a modification. Let me go ahead and save the changes. Now I'm going to go back to the topology map, selecting it here in the menu. And in the Network Info Pane Tunnel tab, I'm going to click Add. And I'm going to make sure the provisioning method, this is actually the default in this version of, this is North Star Controller 4.0, and in, in, in the default provisioning method is NetConf. I can select PSET, right? But, it, but you know we're gonna we're gonna pick NetConf. I'm gonna give it a name, right? NetConf VMX. Let me just make sure I spell it right. NetConf VMX1 to VMX2. I'm gonna specify VMX1 is the ingress node. VMX2 is the egress node, right? I'm gonna leave the default you know provisioning type of RSVP. Let's go to the path tab. Let's let's create a you know. A, kind of a complicated path through the network. So I'm going to specify a preferred path. Uh, it's going to, you know, it, the, of course, VMX1 is the ingress node. I'm going to go have it go to the, the P1 node. I'm going to add another hop in the path, have it go to the, the P2 node. Let me kind of move this out of the way here so you can, you know, just build a path. And, and I just wanted to show you, the reason I'm building the path here is, remember, once we provision this label switch path, you, you will see you know, it placed in the device's local configuration file. So I want to you know, come through here and, and at least build a long path. So it, you, it'll actually you, it'll build the path. It'll build all the label switch path properties. So you'll see all this in the uh, device's local configuration file. All right. So there's my label switch path. Let me hit submit so the North Star controller can provision this. All right, and there it is. Okay, so so I, it was provisioned. The you know it was provisioned with NetConf. It's up. It's active. That makes me feel pretty good. So so I have a label switch path now that was provisioned with NetConf between the VMX1 and the VMX2 nodes. So it's been provisioned. Now what I want to do is I'm going to connect to the VMX1 node itself, and then we'll we'll take a look at what's in its configuration. All right, so I'm on the VMX1 node now. I'm going to run a show protocols MPLS so we can view the NetConf provision LSP attributes that have been placed in the configuration file. Here's the label switch path, NetConf VMX1 to VMX2, you know, the ingress, the egress nodes, right? And then here's the path. Look at this path. There's a primary path, NetConf, VM. This was automatically created, and I can see the path. Remember, we went into the properties, uh, we went into the path tab in that provision LSP window, and we specified the hop by hop by hop how we would like this label switch path to traverse the network. And so using NetConf, it, it's placed in the configuration file. Now, another command you can also run is a show MPLS LSP. And I can see the state, hey, this from, from you know, from 20.20.1, .20 which is VMX1, to 20.20.2, you know, this label switch path is up. So if the North Star controller provisioned it for me. And, and again, if this platform, if this VMX1 device loses connection, to the North Star controller, these NetConf provision label switch paths, you know, will not time out. In this learning by we demonstrated how to use the North Star controller to deploy NetConf provision label switch paths. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.